Did ape men once walk the earth and should that matter to Christians? You know, it seems like every few months headlines announce the discovery of a new hominid or ape man fossil. Often they make the sensational claim that this new fossil rewrites the story of human evolution. Now, should Christians be concerned about these scientific discoveries? Can you believe that humans and apes are related and still believe the Bible? Could Adam have been an ape man? And what does that, this have, uh, any of this have to do with the gospel message? That's what's important to Christians. Well, first of all, we need to recognize that our worldview kind of colors our thinking about the past. You know, people who believe in millions of years of evolution interpret fossils differently from people who believe God specially created humans only a few thousand years ago. For example, when researchers unearthed the famous Lucy fossil in 1974, you know, the bones didn't, uh, they, these fragments didn't come with a set of instructions, you know, saying that, you know, these were buried 3.2 million years ago. But, of course, evolution-believing scientists declared that Lucy was our cousin and, and creatively fashioned the fragments of bones into models at museums around the world, showing her standing or walking upright. Sculptors gave the chimpanzee-sized uh, creature human hands and feet. But these features weren't based on actual finger and toe bones because they never found any of those bones. They were put there because of their starting assumptions that Lucy was part human and part ape, not because of the facts. Now, on the other hand, pun intended, Dr. David Menton, the anatomist uh, who supervised the Lucy uh, reconstruction at the Answers in Genesis Creation Museum, of course, he rejects evolution. So as a biblical creationist, he begins his scientific study of fossils, believing that God created apes, and humans as distinct kinds of creatures. So looking at the same evidence, Dr. Menton arrives at a different conclusion. His model of Lucy depicts her walking uh, on her knuckles like an ape. He chose this posture after studying the length of the arms and the, the shape of the hip bones and the shape of the skull fragments. Now, they're the same bones, but different interpretations of the facts. You see, to create an ape man, from fossils, evolutionists have three options. Sometimes they combine ape and human bones. Um, for example, for decades, paleontologists held up Piltdown Man as a human-ape transitional form. But of course, Piltdown Man was proven a hoax in 1953. It was a human jaw, a, a skull connected to an orangutan jaw with some creative filing on the teeth. Now, it fooled many people in those early days of modern anthropology, um, e even some scientists do, who declared it a missing link. But that link, of course, snapped after detailed examination. Now, another way to, to, to make an ape man is to, to emphasize the ape-like features in some human fossils. So Homo erectus and Homo neanderthalus, for example, are often made to look like apes. Historically, Neanderthals have been portrayed as brutish, hulking figures, you know, barely capable of grunting. But of course, with further research, a picture of intelligent, artistic, truly human beings has emerged. And researchers no longer depict Neanderthals as subhuman, but as just a variation of early humans. So if a Neanderthal were walking through a busy town square, you probably wouldn't even notice them. Similarly, evolutionists have tried to elevate some ape fossils to the status of human, and that was the case with Lucy. You know, there's a famous video showing a one scientist that actually using a saw and a grinder on a replica of, of Lucy's pelvis. Why? Well, he knew that, you know, Lucy walked upright, but her hips were the wrong shape. So he cut and ground them until they fit the way they should. <laughs> By changing the shape of the, the pelvis and emphasizing features of the fossil that seemed closer to human than ape, Lucy, the lady, was born. Now, despite these attempts to justify an evolutionary view of human ancestry, Humans have always been distinct from apes. None of these three methods of interpreting fossils show that apes and humans share a common ancestor. The Bible makes it clear that God created man mankind separate from various apes. As God presented the animals to Adam, for example, to name them, Adam didn't find his counterpart among the apes. It wasn't until God uh, specially created Eve from Adam that he had a mate, a helper comparable to him. We read that in Genesis 2.18. Now, all of God's creatures, including mankind, were specifically created to reproduce more of the same. So apes produce more apes and humans produce more humans. So should the idea of ape men matter to Christians? Well, yeah, this isn't just some squabble among scientists over some old bones. Saying that modern humans evolved from ape-like creatures, that denies biblical truth. The two ideas are irreconcilable without turning the early chapters of Genesis into a myth.